Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to learn how to use our commits like checkpoints. More specifically, we are going to learn about resetting our repository, undoing changes and reverting files. In the last video we created a timeline of commits that looked like this. Now I'm going to add some files to my repository and make some more commits. In order to compare reset, revert and undo, I will make two copies of my repository and test each of these components on one of them. First, let's talk about reset component or the hard reset to be exact. As the name suggests, the hard reset component permanently resets the repository to the state of an older commit. For example, if I decide to reset the repository to the state of our initial commit, the result would look like this. You might have noticed by now that this approach seems dangerous as it would wipe out a part of our timeline. And that is true. That is why I would recommend only using it when you have to and work of your teammates wouldn't be damaged by it. Now I will test it in GitHopper. Now I'm using the select commit component. Now I use the reset component to reset my repository to my initial commit. Now as you can see I only have a readme file in my repository which is from my initial commit. Now it's time to talk about the undo component or reset to last commit to be exact. To put it in simple terms this component is a fast and easy fix for messy situations. You modified some files and came to the realization that you are better off going back to the state of your last commit, when everything just worked. Of course, you could use the hard reset component to select your last commit and fix the situation. But with this component, you wouldn't have to go through all of that, and it would be safer because you wouldn't have to manually select your commit. Now I will test it in GitHopper. I added this text to my first text file and here I add another text to my second text file. And then I delete these files. Now when I check the status, it knows that I deleted and modified some files.
Now when I push the undo button, the files return to the state of my last commit. In the end, let's talk about the revert component, or revert file to be exact. As the name suggests, the revert file component reverts the file and not the repository. And that means that the timeline wouldn't be touched and only the selected files would be reverted. If you decide that you are happy with the changes resulted by the revert operation, you can commit your changes and move on. Now I will test it in GitHopper. First, I check my commit list. Here's the text that I added. Now I'm using the select commit component to select a commit before I modified my Word document. And then I use the select file component to select my Word document and revert my changes on that file. Before I push the button, let's take a look at my Word file. As you can see, the modification is now gone. Now I decided that I want to keep the modification. In other words, I want to revert my file to the state of a later commit. Again, I select the file and then the commit. The modification is now there. One last thing that is worth mentioning is that the GitHopper does not track the files that haven't been committed yet. I will explain this further by using an example. Now I go to my second copy of the repository. I use the git path component to select my repository location. Now I'm going to check the status and my commit list. I will now create some files and modify them. An interesting fact is that GitHopper doesn't pay attention to empty folders that don't contain any files. As soon as we add some files to that folder, the GitHopper will track the changes on that folder. Now I'm going to reset my repository to its initial commit. I select the initial commit.
as you can see the file are still there and haven't changed. Why is that? It is because GitHopper doesn't touch the file it hasn't tracked before. If you are not committing it, the GitHopper is not touching it. The same goes for the files that might have existed in our repository folder for a long time, but haven't been committed yet. That is why I recommend not selecting a specific files to commit when you can commit all the changes in your repository. Congratulations, the hard part is now over. In the next video, we're going to work with branches and we're going to talk a little about the proper way to utilize them. Have a good day and goodbye.